I said yo what up YouTube my name is rap this is I rap on point welcome back but if you're new to the channel how you doing thank you for being here yes we back at AZ's channel to check out his latest that he uploaded yesterday it's called 20 wholesome facts and details in dead by daylight I was actually psyched when I saw that he uploaded this and I couldn't wait so yeah let's check it out also if you're new please subscribe I'm trying to reach 5k subscribers by tomorrow smash that like hit the notification bell so you don't miss an upload when I go live and with that being said enough talk we know what time it is if you dig it and you with it let me know cause we about to get into this video so let's go Hey everyone, today I thought we'd look at the light side of Dead by Daylight and look at some wholesome parts of the game and its lore. Let's go! This was actually quite hard. Kazan went on over a hundred tracks for his son. In the add-on Black and Toenail, we can read a rather wholesome Oni moment, which is unusual. After Kazan's son, Akito, fell from a tree and injured his leg, Kazan is said to have gone on over a hundred winter tracks to a temple, presumably to pray. Hold up, let me read this. Fell off during one of Kassan's hundred winter treks to the temple despite his pilgrimage, Akito's leg would never heal. Black and Tono common Yamaukas Wrath Add-on. Yamaukas. I hope I'm saying that right, but yo, I didn't know that, man. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. Temple, presumably to pray or give offering for his son's leg to heal. And despite his murderous tendencies, it seems he was at least trying to be a good father. Lots of the survivors had pets and were good with animals. What? We learn that Nia has a natural affinity with cats in her cosmetic named Cat's Claw Shirt. This can be seen through her many cosmetics that focus on cats, one of them even having the spine chill cat. Nia is said to have had a cat of her own too, named Rotten, which she dressed up in punk outfits, which named Rodden and dressed in punk outfits. I don't know why that just goes well together. That's funny. But yo, check this out. Let me know in the comments. Are you team cat or team dog? Let me know. I would say I'm neutral. I did have a dog back then. I don't know if I've mentioned it before. My first dog's name was Raider. I had to give him away to the homie. And then time passed. And then, you know, the dog escaped. Raider escaped. And then he was never found. He was never seen again. I miss you, Raider. But then later on, uh, I had a homie that had a cat. You know, I've been around cats lately and stuff like that. Rest in peace to Cassidy, who just recently passed away. He was an awesome cat. Chill cat. But uh, let me know if you're team cat or team dog in the comments, please. Which look fairly similar to some of her own cosmetics. The other pet we know of is her rat, named Milo. We don't know much about Milo, really aside the fact that he existed. I wonder if he too had a mini punk outfit. Yeah, that'll be funny. Questions here on this channel. Jeff also had a pet, a dog. The end of Jeff's lore is actually really tragic, with his dog being left alone. He was clearly a good owner though. With All right, his neighbor got tired of sitting his dog, which became more and more agitated as days went by. The dog became a stray again, earring while seeking the familiar trail of uh, Jeff's multi scent. Multi, like malt liquor? Nah? Maybe? I don't know. With his dog still searching for him after his disappearance, we can see the dog in a charm, and it poses the question in the flavor text of who saved who, which is cute. Meg took care of a grumpy cat named Mocha whilst it was undergoing treatment. Claudette took care of her friend's rescue dog named Celeste. The dog was anxious, so Claudette took it to the park and gave it lots of treats. Nice. Dwight was also seemingly a dog walker. In his dog walking cosmetic, we can actually see a number on the t-shirt he's wearing, suggesting he ran a small business of sorts. Thanks to Mint Skull, by the way, for pointing out some of these to me. He makes similar videos over on his channel, and finds some really cool hidden stuff. Be sure to go check him out. I'll check him follow. out. Claudette wrote a comic about herself. In the most recent tome, Tome 12, we have two charms that center around Claudette's comic. It seems to be a superhero comic, where she takes on the name Science Girl, the same name she went by on her online forums. Her sidekick in the story is a bee named Abby, which I guess is a play on A-B. In Tome 12's riff, she also got her super suit as a cosmetic, which is said to be made by her mother. It also appears to 
to take on the colors of the ghost orchid, a flower stated to be her favorite in a charm. Charlotte's nice. custom toy. Before Madeline gives birth, she buys both a toy soldier and a doll, one for if she has a boy, and one for if she has a girl. When Charlotte and Victor are born, she gives the toys to both of them. Charlotte, however, modifies her doll smashing open the chest, placing in it a smaller doll to represent Victor. Feng loved to cosplay. Feng was both an esports player and a streamer, but she also loved to cosplay in her spare time. We can see many of her cosplays in the game as cosmetics. Her rift outfit is from an original game, named Nebula Arc, where she's dressed as a Nexus Ranger. Her cosmetic set, Enter the Matrix, she appears to cosplay as Trinity from the Matrix films. Nice. Her most recent cosplay is of Jill Valentine, wearing her original Stars outfit, seen in Resident Evil. Nice! Game. She also has a set that's inspired by one of her favorite pop groups. The Legion are really good friends. <laughs> In the BFFs add-on for the Legion, we can see a ne- Why'd you laugh, AZ? He, he like, laugh like, yeah, they should be good friends. They're out there killing, uh, you know, what do you call it? Killing people together, you feel me? So that's, that's funny that he laughed. I want to go back. I want to go back. He's all like, the Legion are really good friends. <laughs> the Legion are really good friends. <laughs> <laughs> In the BFF sat on for the Legion, we can see a necklace made up of five parts, a central part, and then four separate parts all connected to necklaces for each of the Legion members, which right. when connected forms a heart. I just thought that was kind of cute. It also reminds me of the survivor bullcog image that represents the survivor side. These four pieces forming together to make something functional. The group's heart is the whole group. The entity canonically has a birthday. In Arcus 129, the Observer receives a very strange invitation. Ooh, excuse me. A knock at the door and an invitation attached to a bottle of whiskey awaiting for me at the, f at the foot of the door. I kneel to inspect the invitation. You are cordially invited to the entity's birthday. The entity has a birthday? Am I losing my mind? My grip on reality? Whatever that actually means here, is this some kind of prank by a maroon soul? Interesting. Whilst in his tower, inviting him to attend the entity's birthday. This one is debatably wholesome, with the observer speculating it's a prank of some kind. It's a humanizing aspect of the entity, if true though. Yui has her Hachimaki on every cosmetic. After Yui is attacked, she loses her lucky Hachimaki that her grandmother gave her. She is then given a new one by her group, the Sakura Seven that she supports with her race winnings. The new Hachimaki can be seen on every one of her cosmetics in some form, or substituted with a pink band of some kind. The nurse and the wraith found love in the realm. What? Yep, the devs have confirmed that there is something between wraith and nurse. With what? The nurse and the wraith have been getting jiggy with it. And got busy. What's up? Hey. A great suggestion that it's romantic, with the two of them even having connected outfits that were released around Valentine's Day. I made a whole video on it, so go watch that if you're interested. I will. Huntress based her main look on a toy her mother gave her. In the Tome 3 trailer cutscene, we can see Huntress receive a small bunny toy just before her and her mother are attacked by soldiers, seemingly the first time that Anna witnesses violence. It therefore seems like she decided to base her main look and mask off of this toy, nice. potentially reminding her of innocence and her mother. The twins probably still have their mother's scarf. In a similar fashion, the twins appear to hold on to the memory of their mother by keeping their mother's scarf, which is described in an add-on. While Charlotte mainly holds only the essentials on her back, the scarf is something she always carries after all these years. Lots of animals in the realm have names. The horse on Father Campbell's chapel is named Maurice, or Maurice the Great Mystic in a charm. Potentially his third eye gained in the realm gave him foresight. The pig on yeah. Coldwind Farm is named Hamlet. The meat tree, so I guess the collective of cows, is named Dimitri. So yeah. <laughs> Dimitri is called Dimitri. That's clever. I like that. That's clever. The spirit had a good mother. Lots of good mothers. 
Not so much fathers, it seems, in DBD. In Damn. lots of the spirit's add-ons, we have reference to her mother, many of these being quite rare, and so holding the most emotion for Rin. The mother-daughter ring is iridescent, described as a silver ring, engraved with for my precious daughter. The dried cherry blossom is likely from the estate gardens, where Rin and her mother would go to escape her father. Finally, we have mother's glasses, described to belong to a loving mother. It's nice, seeing as so many DVD parents are just the worst. Adam was a cool teacher. In a bunch of Adam's cosmetics, we learn about how he was a good teacher. He starts up a chemistry, art, and tennis club to inspire his students. He takes a bunch of them to a trickster concert, and even dresses up for it. Let's not forget his base law too, where he throws himself in front of a detached door to protect a girl. Probably around the same age as his students. Basically nice. Adam is just the best teacher. Matching and themed character outfits. Some of the connected characters have matching outfits or outfit features which is kind of wholesome. Both Trickster and Yun Jin have matching designs for their sleeves. Rin has an armored outfit to reflect the Oni. Also the aforementioned Wraith and Nurse pairing outfits. Mm. Frank and Julie both wear the same outfit too. There's probably more of these themed connections. Let me know of any others you know of. The entity can be nice, Sometimes. I bet. This one has a million asterisks, because the entity probably doesn't do these things for the intent of being kind, but it does weirdly benefit some of the characters quite a lot. The most notable being the resurrection of Victor. After Charlotte has been alone for so long, hunted all her life, it's nice that she gets a reunion with someone she loves, however messed up that reunion is. It saves Sadako from an eternity in the well, uh, okay. I'm struggling to think of more, but there's some good, I guess. It gave Ghosty those cool floaty straps because he's the entity's favorite. What? That was pretty nice. There is a universe where Dwight is a king. This is something the Observer reads in the Notes of the Absurd. Ha! Bubblegum tuna on Tuesday. Sir Regal Dwight in a thicklish purple robe and golden crownie steps out into the courtyard and greets all the peasants with good words and pizza. That should totally be a cosmetic. The kingdom cheers and roars. Okay. In some universe, Dwight is a king, and bubblegum tuna exists. Or it's possible that this was bubblegum tuna? That's wild. Written by a previous observer, whose mind was slowly falling apart and went crazy. But hey, let's stay positive. Jane launched her own positive body image fashion line. Amongst many things Jane does, one way she uses her fame for good is by starting up a positive body image brand, featuring photo shoots with no retouching. The Resident Evil characters will sometimes greet each other in the lobby. Rebecca. Glad to see you're okay. Small one nice. here, but some of the Resident Evil characters will interact when in the lobby. It's a small little detail, but it's nice that the characters that know one another do acknowledge each other, giving some hope in the darkness of the realm. On Wraith's Halloween charm, Azarov has a costume too. That's the whole detail. I thought that was pretty cute. Alright, that's gonna do it. Nice! That was a lot harder than I thought. I do hope you enjoyed though and be sure to point out any wholesome details you may have seen in game down below. All right, y'all, so I'm gonna end the video right there. That was 20 wholesome facts and details in DVD, and I salute AZ for, like, researching this because I would have never thought to actually research wholesome things in DVD. You get me? Like, yeah, I like that. I, I appreciate you for giving it your time, AZ. Much love to you. You you have a great channel. I, like I always do, I'm gonna drop his link in the description in case you're not subscribed to AZ. Also, if you wanna follow my DVD family, the links will be down there, along with my social media. So if you wanna become a member, and that's it, I think, yeah? <laughs> but yo, man, I always appreciate your time. Thank you for being here. I hope you're keeping the positive vibes up and the negative shit out. Let me know which one's your favorite detail and or fact about the, the wholesomeness of, you know, the characters and killers. And uh, I'm going to check you out in the next one. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. I'm trying to hit 15K subscribers by tomorrow. Smash that like, hit the notification bell so you don't miss an upload and when I go live. And with that being said, stay safe, stay blessed. Always wrap on point. Wash your hands, wash your ass. Peace. And yeah. Unity. Till next time, adios.